Adventure, it seems, is always afoot, and particularly throughout the early 20th century, the human wanderlust for eternal endeavour turned its sights toward the more mysterious, unexplored places of the planet that for an age remained unclaimed by society and civilization. It is human nature to wonder just what's over that hill or what lurks in that deep, dark cavern, and for the most part, that endless curiosity has carried our species to the lofty heights that we are today. But sometimes, when we flick back through the annals of history, that same curiosity has often been the cause of our complete and utter ruin. Hello horror fans, what's going on and once again welcome back to the Scary channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. As per usual, I'll be your horror host Jack Finch as today we curiously take a look at the Top 5 Scariest Cursed Expeditions. Roll the clip. We heard it a mile back up in the ice, and a mile before that. I fired in its direction to drive it off, but it must not be for in its life of smell anything like an Englishman. For the curious amongst you, that clip was from the disgustingly underrated AMC horror series The Terror, which fictionally takes some liberties with one of the most famous doomed expeditions in history, Franklin's Lost Expedition, which may or may not be on this list. But nevertheless, it's an originally awesome TV series, and if you haven't seen it, you definitely should. Anyway. On with the show. Kicking off at number five, the Donna Reed Party. Now, it's a given fact that throughout the history of the colonization of North America, there are countless recorded tales of bleak misfortune and murderous misery, but one of the most famous accounts is that of the renowned Oregon Trail and one of the most infamous groups of pioneers to ever walk it, the Donna Reed Party. However, in an even more grim revelation, the one word that first springs to mind in this instance is cannibalism. You see, during the 1840s, the fledgling United States saw a massive increase in pioneers, particularly people who had left their traditional homes in the east to settle the newly founded Oregon Territory and California. In the bright and hopeful spring of 1846, almost 500 wagons departed from Independence, Missouri, including the wealthy Reed and Donna family, forming a massive wagon train bound for the new territory. However, by July, the Donna Reed party had received word of a new trail that would get them to their destination quicker, given to them by a pioneer adventurer named Lansford W. Hastings. Trusting Hastings would ultimately be the worst mistake that the party made, and despite protests from some, the party split off from the main wagon trail and headed into the Wasatch Mountains. Eventually though, the unexplored and relentless landscape proved merciless to the party, and they quickly became split off from each other over weeks and months of hardship. The party were beset upon by accidental gunshot deaths, malnutrition, grizzly bears, whiteouts, and blizzards, and by February the 19th, the true extent of their misfortune was realized by the outside world. The party were finally found at Truckee Lake. 41 of them had died, and the other 46 had resorted to eating the dead just to survive. And all of that because of a supposed shortcut. Sometimes it seems it's best to stay on the beaten path. Coming in at number four, the Darien Scheme. Now, although I'm a huge advocate for the majestic people and picturesque peaks of the Caledonian Kingdom of Scotland, noble explorers and brave adventurers in their own right, it's safe to say that in early history, they weren't exactly known for their feats in exploring the southern places of the Americas. And there may be a reason for that. The doomed expedition of the Darien Scheme, a ploy conjured up in the mid 1690s to get Scotland into the newly surging worldwide economic trading game. And where did they set their sights? Panama, of course. In 1698, five ships filled with 1,200 people set sail from the eastern coast to avoid detection by British warships as the East India Company didn't exactly take kindly to any competition of commerce. Villains. And on November the 2nd, 1698, they successfully landed off the coast of their destination without a hitch. The settlers aptly christened their new home, New Caledonia and all was well. That's until they realized that none of them had absolutely any idea how to live in the Caribbean, never mind set up a trading post. First up, they decided to spend all of their energy constructing a fort in an area with no fresh water supply, and many of them quickly succumbed to dehydration. Then they decided to go to the backbreaking effort of setting up fields to grow maize and yams, which they didn't have any idea how to do either, or even had access to the crops in the first place. Because they didn't know how to store food in the burning heat of Panama, little food that they did manage to gather quickly spoiled and dysentery, fever and rot spread throughout the fort. In the end, out of 1,200 settlers, only 300 survived the ordeal, with many more dying on the return ship back. And in January of the year 1700, they completely abandoned the colony, and when they returned to Scotland, the few survivors were disowned by their families and considered a disgrace to the entire country. <sighs> Yikes. 
Next up at number 3, the Percy Fawcett Expedition. Percy Fawcett, what a name. And with a name like that, you'd think that nothing could ever go awry, twirling his beautiful moustache and smoking a pipe as he surged across the seven seas in his hot air balloon. But unfortunately for Percy, that same headstrong British gumption was exactly what spelled his ruin. Although the actual fact of the matter remains, no one truly knows the ultimate fate of Percy Fawcett. And it is rumoured that over 100 people have died in 13 separate attempts just to learn exactly what happened to him. So, what's the big deal? Well, Percy was a member of the British Royal Geographical Society, and he was convinced that somewhere in the deep jungles of the Amazon lay a legendary golden palace of riches ripe for the picking that he referred to as the Lost City of Zed. And so, after the First World War had ended, on April the 20th, 1925, Percy, his eldest son Jack, and his friend Raleigh set off into the jungle alongside two Brazilian guides, two horses, eight mules, and two dogs. They would never be seen again and the last known correspondence was a letter written by Fawcett to his wife sent by a runner from the remote dead horse camp. Now there are a multitude of rumours surrounding the ultimate fate of Percy Fawcett, but the fact of the matter remains that we very well may truly never know. One of the most accepted rumours is that the group met an ill fate at the hands of an unknown Amazonian tribe, although it is widely known that Percy Fawcett kept in good standing with the majority of the tribal people. Others claim that Percy never truly intended to return to Britain, and instead instead already had knowledge of the lost city of Zed, where he planned to create a commune with his son and live out the rest of his days. Who knows, maybe one day another brave explorer will stumble upon the lost city of Zed, and the final resting place of Percy Fawcett will finally be discovered. Spooky. Although I've seen enough Indiana Jones movies to know that if there is a golden temple in the jungles of the Amazon, it's probably full of giant boulders and walls upon walls of poison spears. Nah. Next up at number 2, Franklin's Lost Expedition. Of course, because much like with our opening clip, we can't outline a list of the scariest cursed expeditions in history without acknowledging one of the most horrifying tales of remote isolation in the frozen icy flows of the Arctic Circle. Led by Captain Sir John Franklin, the expedition departed from England in 1845. A total of 129 men spread across two ships, HMS Erebus and HMS Terror, with the ultimate intention of navigating the legendary final section of the Northwest Passage, an unexplored area of the frozen north. From the off, the expedition was met with brutal hardship, and after suffering a few early fatalities, the two ships became icebound in the Victoria Strait, unable to move in the remote territory of what is now known as Nunavut. That was their last known recorded location. In 1848, three years later, the first search party had been launched after a campaign by Franklin's wife, and in 1850, the first relics of the doomed expedition were found. The rough, shallow graves of three crewmen buried off the east coast of Beachy Island. Later, However, in 1854, an explorer by the name of John Ray found evidence of a few malnutrition survivors told to him by local Inuit. When the bones of the survivors were finally analysed, cut marks were found pointing towards signs of cannibalism and starkly suggesting that the 129 men resorted to eating each other out in the frozen wastes just to prolong their suffering. Help would never come. In total, it is thought that the two ships were trapped in the ice for a total of one year and seven months before the men wandered even deeper into the frozen sea, searching for hope that they would never ever find. Despite the misery and ruin of the expedition, in actual fact, it proved to map enough of the landscape to suffice discovery of the coveted Northwest Passage. The ultimate price, though, were the lives of everyone on board. And finally, our number one spot the Lost Roanoke Colony. And the truth of the matter is, the haunting tale of the Lost Roanoke Colony isn't just one cursed expedition, but a number of them spread out across five fateful years, during a time when the Americas were first being colonised by England. Now, many of you may already know the tale of the Lost Roanoke Colony, and hundreds of theories have permeated their way across our culture over countless generations, but still, it serves to be one of the most mysterious and unexplained occurrences in Western history. The expedition and subsequent founding of the colony was first sponsored by the legendary explorer Sir Walter Raleigh, although fittingly, he himself vowed to never set foot in it. And so, in the summer of 1585, the first colony was attempted on the small Roanoke Island off the coast of what is today's Dare County in North Carolina. And quickly, things turned south after a lack of supplies in the area and bad relations with the local Native Americans. Many of the English colonists then left with Drake, but a few resolute pioneers stayed behind, determined to carve a new life for themselves. Later in 1857, a 
new expedition arrived, headed by John White, who would later become the colony's governor. When they made their way to the new colony, though, the only thing they found were the skeletal remains of one of the colonists. Ah, bad sign. Right? Well, in fact, they decided to settle Roanoke again, this time with a larger party of around 145 colonists. John White sailed for England once again in the later summer of 1587, leaving the colony to flourish. But when he returned in 1590, he was greeted by the same familiar sight. Nothing. No one. In fact, not a trace of the 90 men, 17 women and 11 children he had left behind. There were no signs of struggle, no remains of damage. In fact, the only clue was a single word carved into a fence post. Croatoan. Whew. Well, I'm sure you guys have got your own theories about the Lost Roanoke Colony, and if you do, make sure to let us know in the comment section down below. And well, there we have it, our list for the top 5 scariest cursed expeditions. Before we depart from today's video though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more resounding remarks from over the past few days. Marcos Olivares says, I am the curious amongst us. Well, I'm certainly glad to hear it Marcos, finally that phrasing is starting to pay off. On that note, I suppose that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video in particular, make sure to hit that thumbs up button as well as that subscribe bell, and we'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your host, Jack Finch. You've been watching top five scary videos. Until next time, you take it easy.